Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. Um, here's the British pound now on 1110. Now, I don't have the Fibonacci price ladder on here, but I want you to notice where I wrote stage two uptrend in about the middle of the chart that there was a couple of weeks where we did have a pretty strong retracement, okay? And if I were to have put a Fibonacci price line on there, I'm pretty sure we would have held at that point the uh, above the 38. And so um, proper placement using the 38 would have been a good thing to do at that point in time. Notice on the top here, though, I wrote stage three top if price moves lower or a new stage two uptrend is possible if the price closes above the upper line. Um, and again, we've had a lot of fundamental news recently uh, about the British pound, and the British pound has pretty much collapsed against the dollar. So at this point in time, I see I'm kind of cheating to leave the top of this trading range on 11.10 already. And, you know, we, uh, we see here that uh, the British pound has continued to uh, the dollar is continuing to strengthen against the British pound is near the high end of that 6150-65 range. Even our faster 10 moving average is not inside the trading range as of the week between 11.10 uh, and 11.14. So any kind of a hedge that sells higher price calls would give away upside potential. So I'm already worried about doing that. The only thing I can think of at this point if I want to protect that position is a put below the bottom of the range is the most cost-effective hedge because at the bottom of the range is pretty much uh, far enough away from price to where I wouldn't be paying as much for the insurance. So I would be, uh, you know, taking more or less like a higher deductible if I did that. Okay. However, um, a couple of days later as I was doing this presentation, notice um, we did break out of the top of this range, and the dollar versus the British pound is now making an even higher leg higher. Okay. So, um, so much for that. Um, now I've got to look to protect this range. This is the, uh, the end of last week, closed above there. So obviously this upper line now here becomes my bottom line of support. And uh, it's possible for the British pound uh, after that breakout there to consolidate its gains for a few weeks. Okay. All right. So let's move on to our dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Now, the dollar versus the Canadian dollar was really um, the, the currency pair that really stayed in a trading range for a long, long time. Okay? And that gave you opportunities to actually, as long as you identified your trading range, to do some advanced option strategies um, or to just buy simple vanilla, buy, buy the calls at the bottom of the range, sell the puts below there to help pay for it. If you wanted to protect yourself, of course, you could sell a further output uh, on the bottom of the range so that your broker would know how much their uh, limit would be on their loss or your limit would be on the loss, okay? At the top of the range here, this is a nine-month range. So, you know, this is something that on a weekly chart somebody can see very, very clearly. Uh, we had the opportunity to um, sell calls above the range, buy puts at the top to help, um, and sell the calls to help pay for it. And, of course, if your broker wants, uh, will let you do this uh, like that, that's fine. Otherwise, you could buy yourself some protection a little bit higher up here so that uh, you would limit your uh, risk on that trade, too. Notice I had here 624.08, watch for the breakout, buy calls on a breakout above 104. So, again, you can plan for these trades way, way in advance, which is really what successful trading is all about. It's make a plan, execute the plan, monitor the plan, and, and move forward here. Um, it traded in the range, again, between 97 and 103.70 for almost 10 months after a big decline from November of 07. We used the trading range strategy, which included a credit spread to collect some premium, and we made plans to enter a new uptrend when we broke out of the trading range. So it's a simple, simple little strategy. Um, I tell all my students, you know, when I come to teach a class, Einstein missed the plane. Um, I, I'm your substitute, and I like simple, okay? So uh, we did get our little breakout uh, right here We're on 624. We said, watch for the breakout. The breakout happened on 812, around the week of 812. Notice it was not as big of a breakout as any of the other breakouts. And, of course, um, at that point in time, um, I'm looking also to the left here for the resistance that's uh, still uh, still over to the left here. And I'm saying to myself, if any of these breakouts have the chance of being retraced at that point, this one does because 
there is still resistance that uh, we're trying to push past. Even though we've been down here for about nine months and uh, we've had a chance to actually uh, absorb some of the supply in this particular area, we, we do have some resistance we have to watch out for. And notice up here uh, at a higher level, around 120, we have some more resistance that we have to worry about in the future. So I'm already thinking to myself, okay, I have a breakout. Um, I have an opportunity to take my profit uh, because I can buy a pullback if the breakout happens to be a uh, week. Well, that happens to be one of those things that happen. Uh, we did get some kind of a pullback back to where the actual breakout did occur. And we didn't quite break out of the higher trading range. Uh, you see now we have a higher trading range forming above the 10-month range. So we stayed in another trading range for a few more weeks. So I said on 9-1 when I did the last presentation that I was not going to hedge okay, because of the retracement. So there was no point. Okay? It didn't really succeed. There was nothing to hedge. So we said at the beginning of this presentation, we hedge if, there's, if it makes sense. But... Uh, there's no uh, no possibility to hedge. It was the first to break out. Um, it did have resistance that it had to uh, try to absorb. Okay, and the high after the breakout only reached 107 before the retracement back to 104. So there was no sense spending any money to try to protect that position. Um, if you didn't exit the position, of course, you had protection. Um, you have the protection of where the breakout happened. Uh, usually, once prices do break out. If they do test, they should find some support under the theory that it was old resistance and it should be new support in the future. Um, now, we did make a higher little trading range here, and uh, a few weeks later, we looked like we were interested in breaking out of this higher range. If you were flat, uh, if you had sold your calls on the breakout of the range, you have an opportunity to break out of a higher range and another opportunity to enter this position. If you wanted to buy the dip back to that 103.60 uh, or 104 level, which is approximately where that, uh, that dip uh, went to, that's another opportunity to re-enter by repurchasing your calls if you did exit. So a couple opportunities here. So I mentioned on 9.7, the retracement from 107.65 to 104 should have been exited at some point to lock in profit, if not hedged. Let's say you couldn't do it. You forgot to do it. At least if you still had the calls you defined your risk. The most you could lose if you paid for the calls is what you put up. And there was still a possibility that the trade would find support at that level. Um, and we planned for a new breakout entry above the 107.65 resistance as possible, as was another test of the 104 support. So my replan to re-enter here was to buy a breakout above 107.65. Okay. And here's that higher trading range where there was actually some more accumulation and again, going with the four stages in the market, we had accumulation. We had another higher accumulation. Uh, we had another breakout into a stage two. We paused for a little while next to this other area of resistance between uh, 115 and 120 approximately. Okay. Now look at the size of the range here. So we've got another one. We've got a possible stage three top, but again, only if we break out of the bottom of the range. And as I did this presentation on 11.10, which is a week ago, uh, I notice here that I have this candle here that's kind of like not even trying to find the bottom of the range here. It's finding support a little bit higher. So it, it very well could be a breakout to the upside to a new leg. Now, again, Stan Weinstein, who was the guy that came up with the four stages, or at least the first person I ever heard refer to it, he was just on Nightly Business Report talking about the S&P 500, and he pretty much uh, mentioned uh, the Dow also that a break above 80, uh, oh, what did he say? A break above uh, 9,800 would lead to a new uptrend, but a break below 7,800 would lead to a new leg down. So here's a gentleman who's again hasn't been uh, hasn't been trading uh, for quite a while, or have I haven't heard from him for a while. He happened to visit on Nightly Business Report, and he's still talking the same thing. Uh, he's a trader, guys. He makes plans based on probabilities like I do, and I thank, uh, thank the uh, lucky stars that I was able to find the gentleman's uh, material because ever since I've been doing this little um, stages that I'm doing here, I've been very successful with it. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, 
please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.